Hey y'all, my goal for this summer, by the end of the summer, is to reach 1,000 subs. So if you haven't subbed already, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more awesome content. And leave a like if you guys do enjoy this video. I'm not much on the college side of basketball. I don't watch much college basketball. But I try my best you know, to pre predict uh, this draft. And uh, that's it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this video. YouTube, it's your boy Crushables. And here we are today to predict the... 2017 NBA draft. I'm pretty sure I got the right order down. Uh, I had to do some trades here and there to get the right order. We're only going to be doing the lottery picks, and then maybe I'll do a, uh, you know, the playoff picks as well. But for now, we're just going to do the lottery. So, uh, you know, you see the mock draft here, and I'm going to be predicting what I think each team will do. So, and we'll talk about each prospect as we do it. So let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, the Celtics obviously have the number one pick. Now, this is kind of tricky. I think it would be kind of strange for the Celtics to, uh, you know, pick Markel Fultz since they already have Isaiah Thomas. But I definitely could see him doing it. But, you know, trading for a guy like Jimmy Butler or Paul George, you know, might be um, the best thing to do for them. But uh, for this video, I'm going to go ahead and pick. I'm not going to trade it. But uh, I think that either getting Paul George or uh, Jimmy Butler is definitely what uh, possibly the Celtics could do. Now, what I have here, and it's what most people have, I think Alonzo Ball would be kind of a terrible fit in Boston. You know, the Celtics could always draft Josh Jackson, which I think is a big poss possibility that they could do since they already have a point guard. And, uh, you know, they already have Isaiah Thomas. But I don't know. It's just crazy. So I'm going to take Markel Fultz here. Uh, the Celtics are going to pick Markel Fultz, I have a feeling. I just, I don't know. I'm just thinking that the Celtics take uh, Markel Fultz. Or, more likely, I think they trade away the pick. Which would make more sense to me. You know, they don't need Markel Fultz necessarily. They could get a superstar in Paul George. Or, definitely Paul George. The Indiana Pacers would love that first pick. And I think uh, Paul George could definitely be a Celtic. I definitely um, could I definitely could see that. So, with the second pick... We have, uh, we're not going to receive any trade offers, or we're not going to look at any trade offers here. You know, there's an obvious one to pick, but, you know, you know, LeVar Ball is starting a lot of stuff, and I don't know if the Celtics are going to, or not the Celtics, the Lakers are going to love, you know, drafting Lonzo Ball and, you know, having his dad talking bad, and like, you know, when the team maybe does bad, and then LeVar Ball starts blaming on everybody else, but, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when uh, I think, uh, Lonzo Ball, I think he is going to be the Lakers, and that opens up the possibility of uh, the Lakers uh, trading away DeAndre Russell and maybe getting a, you know, picks for him or a nice piece, uh, like a nice solid, uh, you know, superstar or something like that. I don't know if you know DeAndre Russell is worth a superstar or anything, but uh, I think I could definitely see Lonzo Ball going to the Lakers. Although I would not want to deal with his dad if I was the Lakers. Just saying, his dad is kind of saying some stupid stuff and I think all of us are very aware of that but uh you know Alonzo Ball and Markel Fultz are probably my first two guys off the board but you know it's not obvious this year that's the thing it's not obvious it's definitely not obvious you know there's a bunch of people you could take with the first pick and uh next and it is stormy outside so hopefully my electricity don't go out or anything um next we got the 76ers so what do we think the 76ers are gonna do they could take Josh Jackson here, which would be awesome. Darren Fox, Malik Monk would be nice. But, you know, I think the 76ers, what they really need is a point guard. I know they've talked about putting Ben Simmons at, uh, uh, what do you call it, point guard. But I think uh, Darren Fox is the best uh, choice here. Uh, although, if he were to drop to the Knicks, I know the Knicks would love that. But I'm going to go ahead and take Darren Fox here. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, appreciate that pick because De'Aaron Fox with the 76ers could uh, help them out a lot you know but this is all based off my opinion you know these any of these teams could pick whoever they want and it'd probably be a good pick for like the first seven picks maybe and then uh top 10 is pretty good too and I don't know what I'm gonna do with the 14th spot because some of these prospects I don't all I don't know all these prospects if I'm completely honest with you I don't pay attention to college like like that that much but uh definitely um feel like that that's a good pick for the 76ers next this is my favorite destination for Josh Jackson and it's the Phoenix Suns I think Josh Jackson and and the Suns could definitely be a match made in heaven you know they already have guards there in Phoenix they have plenty of guards 
So they don't need, you know, Blake Monk. They don't need that. They need a forward. You know, they trade away Marcus Morris and Markeith Morris. And they need a forward. Josh Jackson could play the four. He could play the three. And I think this would be a perfect pick for the Suns. Now, next one we have the Kings. Um, it's interesting because all they really have right now for a building piece is a uh, uh, Buddy Hield, and I think Tyreek Evans is going to be a free agent. If I'm if I'm thinking right, maybe I'm wrong about that. But you know, right now we're just going to think about Buddy Hield here. So the Kings, you know, they could go a lot of directions, and you know, I could be like be realistic and think about what the Kings might do. And uh, you know, I like a lot of these guys here. And I could see them taking, you know, Moik Monk, but they do have a nice shooting guard already in Buddy Heald. He seems to be fitting well there. Uh, you know, a guy like Jason Tatum or Jonathan Isaac would be nice. Dennis Smith Jr. or something they could use. Uh, I honestly don't know who Frank this guy is. I might be stupid for that. I'm pretty sure he's good, but I really don't know who he is. I've never heard of him. It's kind of crazy. I don't know some of these guys, to be honest, but I'm going to go ahead and take I'm going to take Jason Tatum with this pick. I think the Kings could use a forward, and uh, I think that's a nice little solid piece for uh, the Kings here. Jason Tatum, although the Kings could go different directions, they need a lot of building pieces, and then they could just screw it all up in general and, you know, pick some random guy always. But uh, next we got the Orlando Magic. This is another team that's basically just kind of lost, and they're just lost, so... I think the Magic, what they could really use is a guy like Malik Monk. Um, you know, they already have Evan Fournier, but they could easily move him to the three. And they have Terrence Ross over there. But the Magic are just a mess, man. They're just a mess. And I'm going to take Malik Monk with this pick. But the Magic are definitely a freaking mess. And they need something. That's for sure. Uh, next, we got Minnesota Timberwolves. I mean, did you guys see the Magic's offseason plans? They were they were a mess, man. The Magic need to do something. And I think Malik Monk would be a nice uh, little pickup for him. Again, this is all based off my opinion. You could all be thinking I'm really stupid right now for the picks I'm making. But uh, this is based off my predictions. I want to know you guys' predictions in the comments as well. You know, when I think in the Minnesota Timberwolves, I'm thinking point guard. Uh, I'm He's slipping my mind right now. He's slipping my mind right now. I do not why, don't know why I can't think of his name. Wow, I can't think of his name, but the point guard they drafted last year, for some reason, is slipping my mind right now. I know who he is, but he hasn't turned out, uh, panned out for him just yet. God, uh, Chris Dunn, Chris Dunn. I was like, geez, I could not think of uh, what I want to think of right now. And I think Dennis Smith Jr. would be a pretty nice uh, pickup for the Minnesota Timberwolves. They need a point guard. Rubio is all right, but uh, I think Dennis Smith Jr. would be a nice, solid piece for them in Minnesota. Play around Carl Anthony Towns, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, Gorgie Dang. It would be awesome. Up there in Minnesota, a nice point guard for him. And uh, that's the best pick um, I have right now for them. The Knicks. Now, this is another team that's a dumpster fire. They have Porzingis that could play the four or the five. The They're most likely going to trade Carmelo, I think. You know, you never know what's going to happen with that. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, they don't need a four. Uh, Harry Giles, Jonathan Isaac is someone I'm considering. Um, Frank, I wish I knew who this guy was, man. Uh, I would definitely give him more credibility. I don't know why I don't, but uh, Jonathan Isaac I think would be a nice uh, pickup here in New York. And I also think that the Knicks could definitely use a point guard if they don't, you know, decide to re-sign Derrick Rose. And I always thought Minnesota was a nice spot for Derrick Rose, maybe. Um, I'm gonna, th uh, I'm gonna. Go with Jonathan Isaac here. You know, I'm just thinking best available for the Knicks now that all these guys have come off the draft board. And uh, Jonathan Isaac, the Knicks could definitely use a three. The Knicks could use a lot of things. All they really have right now is a big man and Chris Tapps Porzingis. So, uh, oop, just burped there. Sorry, guys. Uh, Jonathan Isaac is definitely uh, someone I could see in New York. Dallas Mavericks, you know, they have Dirk Nowitzki coming back for another year. Uh, they had Yogi Ferrell starting at point guard. I'm trying to think of who's all on the Mavericks um, right now. Terrence Ferguson. The Mavericks have Seth Curry, who played pretty good for them. So I think they have a nice little uh, shooter in sh at their shooting guard position. Uh, Harrison Barnes, that's the big uh, big guy. They s Not the big guy, but the big free agent signing they had. Um, Juwan Evans, Harry Giles. Who should 
Um, we take with this pick. You know, I'm probably gonna go with Frank. Frank the Tank. No, that's not him. I'm gonna go with uh, cause you know they could definitely use a point guard. The Mavericks could use a point guard. They don't really have, you know, a solid point guard right now. They have Yogi Ferrell, but I don't know how he's gonna pan out. And I'm hoping this guy, uh, you know, I really don't. This is the one guy I really don't know who he is. I'm, ne I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid for that pick, but you know, you never know. I guess the Kings definitely need. They definitely needed these two picks. Um, fifth and the tenth, Terrence Ferguson. We already have a shooting guard. OG Anobi, um, Lori, a four. I saw. I think I saw uh, when I was watching the draft lottery. They had him in the top ten. Uh, pretty sure. So you know the Kings. Well, when I think of big men, they have Willie Cauley Stein. Uh, you know he's all right. Uh, they don't need. They don't need guards anymore. We gave them some nice guards. Buddy Healed. Um. What about? I'm gonna take this guy. Oh, can't say his name. Lori Mark Ken Kanan. Yeah, that's probably right. That really wasn't that hard to pronounce. I don't know why I just struggled with that. But you know, get them a nice four there in uh, Sacramento. They need they need help wherever they can get it, man. They definitely need help wherever they can get it. Um, well, again, I don't watch much college ball, so I might be I might be doing this I might be doing this really stupidly, you know. Never know what I'm doing here right now. Uh, what are we doing again? I totally forgot who we're using right now. Oh, it's the Hornets. We're using the Hornets. Silly me. Okay. The Hornets, they have Kemba Walker, they have Nicholas Batum, and they took Michael Kidd, Gil Kid Gilchrist in like three drafts ago, maybe even more than that. You know, the Kimba, uh, not the Kim I almost said the Kimba Walkers. The Charlotte Hornets don't have a defined two guard. I know they had Nicholas Batum playing the two guard, but they could, uh, you know, maybe move Michael Kidd Gilchrist to the four or something like that. I know they have Frank the Tank there and Cody Zeller. So they could use another guard in Terrence Ferguson. I think this is a nice little pickup for the Charlotte Hornets. And next we have the Detroit Pistons. Um, you know, the Pistons definitely, I think, need another guard. You know, Andre Drummond's really the guy there right now. And they have to decide whether, you know, KCP is worth the money. So, you know, the Pistons need to, uh, you know, get a good pick here. Reggie Jackson, I think, started sucking at the end of the season. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I've heard a lot about Frank Jackson. Frank Mason is a sleeper pick in this draft. I'm, you know, from KU. He's a sleeper pick, and I think he's going to go um, in this year's draft in the first round. It would surprise me. I think a lot of teams could use him. Um, I think Justin, isn't Justin Jackson a pretty uh, solid uh, prospect as well? Um, I'm pretty yeah, from North Carolina. Uh, we're doing it's totally slipping my mind who we're doing it. Oh, the Pistons. Um, OG Anobi. I haven't heard much about him. Harry Giles. Um, the Pistons. Let's see what could they use here. They could use uh. They could use a lot of things up there in uh, Detroit, and they just changed their logo. Um, you know. They don't really have a defined small forward, OG Anobi. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, I don't know, man. Where should I go? What, what route should I go? Um, you know, I'm gonna go OG Anobi, I guess, with this pick. The Pistons could use a, a three. I mean, they have Marcus Morris, but they, he could start coming off the bench or play the four. And they have Tobias Harris too, and they can move him to the two or whatever they want to do. Uh, now that I think about it, that was kind of a weird pick because I just totally forgot about the small forwards they have. Obviously, they could trade them uh, if they wanted to. Uh, so yeah, the Nuggets. The Nuggets have a lot, a lot of young talent here, and uh, I think that the Nuggets cannot go wrong with this pick. I think uh, whoever they get can definitely come off the bench for them, or you know maybe start and. Uh, you know, who I want to go with, I'm not for sure yet. The Nuggets, let's see. They don't have a defined four or do no, they have Kenneth Reed. But he's been coming off the bench for him for them. They've been starting Wilson Chandler, Gary Harris. They don't even have Emmanuel Moutier starting just yet. So I think they're, you know, Jermir Nelson was starting, so I'm gonna, you know, give Emmanuel Moutier the benefit of the doubt just 
just for right now. Uh, maybe they're, you know, promising on him. You know, they have Kenneth Farid, but, you know, a nice young power forward and Harry Giles would never hurt. So, uh, I'd just pick. The Miami Heat are definitely a team that just need a, just need someone that will take them over that hump. Right now they have Goran Dragic, Justice Winslow, you know, Chris Bosh if he comes back, but I doubt it. Hassan Whiteside and uh, Deion Waiters panned out nice for him, but they have to re-sign him because he's probably going to opt out of that $3 million deal after playing how he did. Uh, what I think um, the Miami Heat should do here, um, I think... You know, I've just heard so much about this Justin Jackson guy. I'm going to take Justin Jackson. I'm going to take Justin Jackson here. I mean, might be sc- Actually, I've heard a lot about Isaiah Hartstein too. Ike. I mean, I've heard a lot about all these guys. I don't think... Not all. I guess not all of them. Jawan Evans, I've never heard of. Bam. I've heard of him before. I don't know much about him. I feel very unprepared right now because I really don't know who some of these prospects are. I've heard of Justin Jackson. And I think uh, the Miami Heat could use a guy like Justin Jackson. But I could be stupid for, you know, passing on one of these guys. Deion Waiter is someone that might want a lot of money when he walks. Uh, No, I feel like I'm going to get roasted a lot in this video. But uh, it's fine. I'm just going to take Justin Jackson here. And then I'm going to sim to the end and uh, see how I did. And, you know, maybe based on the overalls of Embrace the Pace... I'm going to see how I did. Justin Jackson from North Carolina. I don't know. I've just heard a lot about him, man. Just had to take him here. And uh, so let's see how I did. The ranking, 79. I felt like I did pretty good with these like first seven picks. And then after that, it went just downhill. No, this was okay. Okay. Uh, OG Nobi, Harry Giles. Ah, maybe I didn't do. Actually, I don't think I did too terrible based on... Uh, these uh, ranking based on these overalls, man. Maybe you guys would have done something different, but uh, leave a like if you guys did enjoy. And I don't know if you knew about my goal, but my goal for this summer is to reach 1,000 subs by the end of the summer. I have no idea if I can do it, but try to help me out with that, guys. But that's it for me. I uh, wanted to do a little bit of different video. I'm not much on the call. I don't pay attention to college much, but uh, thought I would want to do a you know a, a draft predictions, just the lottery. But uh, don't forget to subscribe. It's Crushables. I'm saying peace.